This video is about problem 12.1.081 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions Text 7th Edition. We're told that the outer edge of a staircase is in the shape of a helix of radius 1 meter. The staircase has a height of 4 meters and makes two complete revolutions from top to bottom. We're asked to find the vector valued function for the staircase and use a computer algebra system to graph our function. We're told that there are many correct answers. We're asked to use t as a parameter and let t go from 0 to 4 pi. Okay, so a couple of things. I'm just going to start graphing a helix over here. This is not going to be the right helix. But this is the idea. Let's say we start over here at this location, and then we go around once, and then we go around twice, and then we stop, and then we're done. Um, like that's, that's approximately what our helix looks like. Now we're told that this um, is the outer edge of a staircase. It's in the shape of a helix of radius one meter. So what that means for us is that when I look at this helix from the top, like if I'm up here and I'm looking down from that Z axis, what I'm going to see is a circle of radius one. But as we go around that circle, we're going up higher and higher. So I have just decided to start here at x equals 1, y equals 0, z equals 1. So I'm starting right here at this location. And then as t increases, we're going up. Now we're told that t is supposed to go from 0 to 4 pi. So from 0 to 2 pi, we make one revolution. And then from 2 pi to 4 pi, we make that second revolution. Um, so that's enough to get us the parametric equations for x of t and y of t, um, as well as like almost get us the parametric equation for z of t. Um, so, okay, we've already taken into account the fact that the radius of that helix is um, one meter, because then we're saying, well, if, if that's true, then x and y, if I'm just looking at the projection of x and y onto the xy plane, um, I'm going to see a circle of radius one. And if that's true, we can use sine and cosine for x of t and y of t. Just like um, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 when you're on the equation of a circle. Um, and when, whenever we're on the unit circle, if we're thinking of t as the angle um, that we're making with that positive x-axis, um, usually we use x equals cosine of t and y equals sine of t. Now, I love that they said that there are many correct answers to this because I can go through two re uh, revolutions very fast or I can go through two revolutions very slowly. Um, but the fact that they gave us this as well actually puts some restrictions um, on the parametric equations for x and y here. Um, so I, I'm on a circle of radius one and that means x should be cosine of t and or x should be cosine of some angle and y should be sine of some angle if we're tracing out that circle, um, just in the traditional way, starting with, uh, on the positive x-axis and then going in a counterclockwise direction. If that's what's gonna happen here, we can use x equals cosine and y equals sine, but the angle inside is going to determine how fast we're going around that circle. Um, if I just put an angle t here, if I just use the parameter t, well then I would go around that circle from zero to two pi. Um, and if I wanted to go around again, I'd be going around again that second time from 2 pi to 4 pi. Well, actually, that's exactly what happens here. If t ranges from 0 to 4 pi, one revolution will happen in 0 to 2 pi. And if I want one revolution to happen um, over that period from 0 to 2 pi, my angles should just be t's. Because then... Um, x of t and y of t will trace out the circle once from 0 to 2 pi and twice from 0 to 4 pi. And the whole time this is happening, um, where the z values are increasing at the same time. So when t is 0, x is 1, y is 0, and we want z to be 0. So let's let z equal k times t. But then as t increases, we're going to go up the helix. And then we're going to go up the helix. And so that's going to effectively let the z value increase. 
um, as we go around and around that circle. So we're going around and up and then around and up, um, just above that. That's the projection of this guy onto the xy plane. So these are our parametric equations, which means we're almost done. We've got x equals cosine, y equals sine, and z equals a constant times t. Now we just have to find the constant. Um, and we're told that uh, the height of the staircase is four meters. That's gonna be enough to enable us to find that constant. So what that is saying is that when z equals four, um, we're gonna stop. Um, and if we weren't given this requirement that t went from zero to four pi, there would be lots and lots of different ways to illustrate this. But since t does range from zero to four pi, and we know that z has to end or stop at four, well, that's gonna be enough to enable us to find that value of k. So we'll say when t equals four pi, that's when we'd like to be at the top here, our z value, has to equal four because our uh, staircase has a height of four meters. Well, if z is k times t, that's k times four pi equals four, and it's pretty easy to solve for k. We just divide by four pi to get k by itself, and we get k equals one over four pi. So that means um, that z, which was k times t, can now be written as one over pi times t or if you prefer, pi over t. So the, this was, in general, that's what it would have to be. And now we've got this. So when someone asks you for the parametric equations of this helix, this is one set of parametric equations that will work. Um, and this works when t is on the interval from zero to four pi. Now, if we used zero to two pi, that would change these two, and it would change these two. If we used zero to eight pi, it would change all three of our components of our vector valued function as well. But the fact that we're using zero to four pi means that whenever I have my cosine and sine here, the angle inside must be t. That way, I go through two revolutions on an interval from zero to four pi. And the fact that we're going from zero to four pi and that height is four, and I'm assuming that z is just a constant times t, um, so that we're going up that, uh, that z value is increasing at a constant rate um, of one over pi units every time t increases by one. Provided I make that assumption, then this is the only option for our z coordinate. Um, so this is, this is all we are asked to do here, but we're also asked to graph this with a computer, computer algebra system. I'd just like to show you how to do that. And I'll show you by sharing my screen with you. So I'm going to share screen now. I'm going to go to CalcPlot3D. This is pretty cool. You can just Google this, Google CalcPlot3D. I believe um, the person who created this is named uh, Paul Seberger. And if we want, we can graph things here. Let's see, I wanna graph a space curve, R of t. This is actually pretty good. It says x of t is cosine of t, y of t is sine of t, and z of t is one over, or uh, one tenth times t. We don't want that, we want one over uh, pi times t, and we want t to range from zero to four pi. And that's it. That's that helix that I tried to draw for you guys. <laughs> and we can, oops, can sort of trace it out, which is pretty. So that is the vector valued function given the interval that they gave us and the fact that the uh, helical staircase um, had a height of four meters and a radius of one meter.